And now back to the MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner. Live from the Fox Sports 920 studio in Las Vegas. And streaming worldwide on UFCRadio.com. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner. I'm Heidi Fang, and I'm joined today by Joey Varner and Phil Devine. Guys, before we left you here, we were talking about an interview with Joey, if you would, please. Your Portuguese is much better than mine. Vinny? Vinny Magalhães. And that's how it's said, everybody. And I got, I got the official from Vinny that for I'm the, I can say it better than any white person he's ever met. Hell yeah. I, so I got, he mailed me an award, and I, I sewed it on my jacket and stuff. I wear it like a badge of pride. <laughs> All right, so we are going to hit that interview for you. It was really awesome. He previewed a lot of the upcoming battle with him and Phil Davis and why he called him out. We're going to get to that right now. Joining us now on the MMA Fight Corner, Vinny Magalhães fighting Phil Davis on UFC 59, April 27th at the Prudential Center in New Jersey. Vinny, how are you doing today? Good. How about you guys? Great. You are on the line with me, Heidi Fang. Phil Devine, and Ryan McKinnell. Uh, I understand you're fighting Mr. Wonderful at UFC 59, and the two of you have become, in my opinion, the co-main event of Smack Talk. Uh, Phil Davis has said he needs to teach you a lesson, that he had to Google you to find out who you were, that wrestling trumps BJJ, but this is the fight that you wanted. What prompted you to call out Phil Davis? So, you know, my last fight, I fought a guy who was definitely not, not like, in the top 15, like, you know, definitely not in the top 10. But uh, he was coming off like three wins in the UFC, which was Igor. And uh, at this time, I just felt like I needed to call out somebody that was a little better ranked and somebody that, like, in my opinion, would make sense to you know. Because I could not be, like, calling out people that I would be thinking that would be, like, a really hard fight, you know. And with Phil Davis, like, style-wise, I think he could have been, like, somehow, like, an easy fight, you know. Out of the, the all the guys in the top ten, I think Phil Davis is the easiest fight for me to take. So that's why I started to call him out. At first, it was nothing personal. It was more like, you know, Hey, that's the guy. That's the style that I have, like, you know. So, you know, that's why I called him out. Then in the, then he kind of, you know, with his response, like, it became a little bit personal. But, uh, you know, the whole thing for me is just to go there and get a win against a top 10 guy. What do you think about some of the things that he said, like wrestling trumps Brazilian jiu-jitsu or that he had to Google you? Do you have any thoughts on some of those things that he said? You know, I think he's just, like, saying things just to try to, like, sound like, you know, funny or whatever, like, you know, we saw, like, Dan and Maya against Fitch. Fitch is, like, known for, like, dominating everybody, like, with his wrestling, you know, for, like, he can go, like, five rounds, like, out wrestling everybody. Then he goes against Dan and Maya, who's a world-class grappler, and he gets smashed on the ground, like, you know, even wrestling. And then you go, like, uh, then you have, like, you know, even, like, my friend Shale, like, you know, he fought Dan and Maya, same thing, got dominated on the ground. He's a great wrestler, if not, like, much better wrestling than MMA wrestler than, than Phil Davis. Also, every time he fought a jiu-jitsu guy, you end up getting caught. So it's like, you know, I, I don't care about, like, what Phil Davis says. Like, you know, especially when he's talking about, yeah, you do have a lot of jiu-jitsu guys that be losing to wrestlers in MMA, but they're, they're not, like, world-class, like, grapplers, you know. But there's a difference between him being a black belt and being, like, a world-class black belt, like, world champion. So, like, you know, I don't care about what he says. Like, if the fight touch the ground, I'm going to submit him. Now, you did bring up Chael's name, the both of you were fighting on this card. I saw that you were working with them with the season of The Ultimate Fighter, and I know that you worked with them in preparation for the rematch against Anderson. Um, what have the two of you been focused on, and um, how much, how often do you train together with him? Well, since, like, since I got scheduled to fight like, on the same card as Chael, uh, we just decided not to train together, so I can just focus on my training, not just like focus on helping out. But, uh, you know... When you were working together, you were, like, working, work, like, on everything. Like, not just defense, but you would work, like, you know, how to, like, you know, go past the guard. Like, you know, how to work on, like, submissions, attacks. We would work on everything. We would work on jiu-jitsu. So it would not be just, like, you know, a lot of people would be, hey, are you guys working on trying your defense? That wouldn't be the case. When I was working with Cherry, it was about, like, work on everything that he needed to. So, yeah, but, like, lately I have worked with him since I just been focused on my camp. Well, what's training been like for you, Vinny? I know, like, with Beecher moving to Colorado, there's got to be some, you know, conflicts there. And I know you're not – are you still training with Couture or you're over full-time with Syndicate now? Uh, I'm a Syndicate, and I'm doing grappling at uh, drive deals, like uh, twice, tw twice or three times a week at drive deals. And uh, the other days I'm a Syndicate. Uh, the thing with Beecher moving, and I changed it a lot because, like, Beecher, I've been working with him for the last three years. And, uh, but I've been working with Nate Padded with, you know, he worked with Mike Pyle, like, and since he started to work with Pyle, Pyle's been, like, in a nice winning streak in the UFC, so, like, you know, 
as far as like change the coaches, like definitely like you know, it made a little difference, but it was not really it wasn't really for the bad. Oh, that's good. That's uh, definitely a plus. Uh, now Heidi brought up earlier the Ultimate Fighter. You were with Chal. Uh, we I gotta say best season of the Ultimate Fighter so far. Really digging it. Top notch talent. Uh, what was it like for you doing uh, the Ultimate Fighter? It, it was fun. You know? It was fun to be there, not like you know, not locked in the house, being there, like you know, kind of sharing my experience in the show too with other guys. And uh, it, it was cool to see, you know, how like how it used to be like an assistant coach. Maybe in the future, if I do so well in the UFC, I can become a coach myself. But uh, no, it was fun. It was a good, cool experience. It was like a fun six weeks. Yeah, it's got to be good going from being a contestant and a runner-up in, in, in the season to going back there and coaching. It had to be uh, definitely feel good that you weren't in the house anymore. Uh, definitely. I, I can understand being there like for like, you know, six weeks, like locked up. No, no way. There's no way. <laughs> you know, you know. So, so, uh, you know Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Vinny. No, yeah, I feel like, you know, when I was, like, I was, like, 24, when I, or 23 when I was in the show, single, like, no kids, like, you know, pretty much I was always in the States by myself, so it was, like, a kind of, it was kind of, like, fun thing to do, like, nowadays, there's no way. No matter, like, you know, if they say, yeah, maybe, like, you know, the winner of the show uh, fights for the titles, like, dude, I don't care. I would never be, like, locked up, like, at 28 with a kid and, like, married, like, in the house with, like, a bunch of dudes. There's no way. It just would not happen. <laughs> Well, well, if you were on the new season, you wouldn't have to worry about being in a in a house with a bunch of dudes. You'd also have girls. <laughs> Next season, yeah. What do you think about that? <laughs> right? You know, still, still, like, I would not do it. You know, I have no thoughts about that. I think it's going to be like, you know, people just think that's going to be like a real world type of thing. I don't think it's, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen that way. Yeah, it's funny. We heard Misha Tate in an interview say that they better be about a lot of birth control for women. And, you know, you're like, wow. And everybody, the first thing out of everyone's mouth sex. was like, there's going to be so much sex. sex. I, I, I hope it's not like that because, like I said, I dig I what the Ultimate Fighter's doing. I like that they're actually showing the guy, the training you guys go through and, and the preparation and the fights. And, and, you know, you don't have the douchebags on the show being the way they are. I, you know, great season so far. Where's, really. the, where's the red mohawk? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Yeah, there's no, this isn't going to have one of those, which was actually good. I agree. Yeah, so let me ask you a question. One of the things we were talking about on the last show when we were talking about this season of The Ultimate Fighter, and we had just seen, you know, uh, Uriah Hall's knockout of um, uh, of Bubba McDaniels, and you saw the anxiety Bubba was going through. And I mean, what was it like when you saw, like, because leading up to the fights and when you, you hear Dana White talking about you're going to see the greatest knockout in tough history and the most devastating knockout, and, like, you see the knockout, and you're like, yes! But then your first thought is, dude, is that guy okay? Like, that guy seriously hurt. What was it like watching Uriah Hall do that stuff up close and personal? Well, here's the thing. Like, I, to be honest with you, like, you know, I've seen, like, knockouts that are, like, much worse. Even I would say, like, Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle, like, knockout, like, also on tough was, like, much, like, yeah. you know. You know, and also, like, when Riddle, like, knocked the guy out, like, I forgot the guy's name, I think it was uh, he not just knocked him out, but he also, like, broke his jaw, and the guy was, like, three months with him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, you know Chael said something after this latest fight, and it, and it caused a little bit of an uproar, in, in, or a little bit of a, a discussion on the message boards, let's say. He said, basically, I've been in this division five years, and he looked at Hall, and he said, you're a contender right now. Funny enough, I tend to agree. I do think he's that good. Um, uh -huh. what, what are your thoughts on that? I also, I pretty much said the same thing to him, like, and I think he's that good, of course, like, you know, like everybody else, like, especially being young, like, there's a bunch of things to work on, but uh, he's so accurate with his striking, you know, and it's part of the game, so I think, like, you know, he's one who's wrestling and he's jiu -jitsu, like, he would just be, like, one of those guys that, you know, two, three years, he would be, like, a top contender, but, uh, you know, he, def he definitely has some stuff to work on, like, you know, sometimes he would train with the uh, other guys that are better on the ground, and he would be getting caught, like, you know, right and left, but that's like part of the game. But also, like I said, if he doesn't improve those areas, he would just be like a promise, you know, if he's going to actually make that far. But he has every, like, you know, everything to make that far. Nice. As far as like talent, as far as like, you know, dedication, the guy's like, you know, he's a, he's a fan of. Well, Vinny, we certainly appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us. And uh, we're going to wish you all the best of luck at UFC 159 against Phil Davis. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, no thank problem. You Take care, Vinny. Thanks, Vinny. Again, guys, that fight is coming up at the Prudential Center in New Jersey, UFC 159. Vinny will be fighting Phil Davis, and that's April 27th. 
I think it's going to be really awesome to see what, I guess, comes out of Chael Son and, and John Jones. A lot of people have been saying that this is going to be, a, I guess, not a challenge really for Jones. I think Chael can step it up. I think he could give him some problems. I don't think it's going to be as easy for John as people are putting it out there to be. Yeah, John says that this is the easiest opponent he's had to train for and he's had to face. There's one thing you need to take into consideration uh, for anybody that's been giving this fight uh, just any issues whatsoever about the